Coming up on Cronkite Sports on Fox Sports Arizona. I'll be attending Arizona State University. A local five-star recruit commits to ASU football. Two California brothers join the quest to return Sun Devil Wrestling to prominence. I think Anthony and Sahid Valencia were the first believers. They were the first people to believe that Arizona State could be the best team in the country. An ASU club team is helping change lives. Three members that barely played at all. Like last year was maybe their first year where they have like 10 practices under their belt and they're already this far. A former pro BMX racer hopes to shape the next generation of riders in Arizona. I thought it was my time, it was my turn to step up and make this track what it needs to be. And we introduce you to the sport of pickleball. Welcome to Cronkite Sports on Fox Sports Arizona. I'm Mauricio Casillas. And I'm Rebecca Wynn. Thanks for joining us. As student journalists at ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, we look to bring you unique sports stories with an Arizona connection. This includes high school, collegiate, and the professional level. We lead off the show with a dynamic duo out of Chandler High School. Nikhil Harry and Chase Lucas are two of the top-rated football players in the state of Arizona and have been friends since they were children. Now they're gearing up for their futures at the collegiate level. Chris Vosmer has more. Next year, I'll be attending Arizona State University. <laughs> On November 2nd, wide receiver Nikhil Harry of Chandler High School announced his commitment to attend Arizona State University. In Harry and running back Chase Lucas, Chandler boasts two of the top three recruits in the state of Arizona for the 2016 class, making the Wolves a dangerous opponent. You know, you can't concentrate on just one of them, so, and I don't think another team has enough players to, to concentrate on all of our skill guys, and so that helps us a lot uh, with distributing the ball, and they're very unselfish uh, individuals as well. Chandler quarterback Mason Moran said the chemistry between Harry and Lucas makes things easier for him when he's under center. It's great to be able to look out to my right and my left and looking and seeing uh, just big time nationally recruited weapons on, on, your, uh, on one team. Rivals ranked Harry as a five-star recruit and number one in Arizona, while Lucas is not far behind as a four-star recruit and the number three player in Arizona. Lucas announced on November 9th that he would be joining Harry at Arizona State as well and to continue to present quite the challenge for opposing defenses. I think it's two completely different weapons you have to worry about. Nikhil being the bigger, more physical kind of guy, uh, going up top making big time receptions and Chase being the one to get on the edge. He's a real speed elusive guy to, to make you miss. The talent resulted in both players receiving a lot of attention from the top college football programs across the country. Lucas said he enjoyed the recruiting process. It shows me that you know that, that somebody that somebody's actually wanting me to go there, not not needing me to go there, but like wanting me to go there. Like if whether they're down on the position or just being like, yo, I really want you to come here because I feel like you can succeed and I could push you to to let me that you've never been. Harry agreed and said he feels like he has found a home at Arizona State. They they did a great job recruiting. You know, uh, I feel like they they really could use a wide receiver, and I feel like um, being a freshman, I could go in and have a chance to play immediately. Harry and Lucas have known each other since they were six years old, and they are close friends that will live the dream of playing in college together. It's great, he just brings so much to the field. He opens up a lot of stuff, and, and it just makes us a very difficult team to guard. Just splitting the reps with him on the field and just knowing that whatever he's gonna do, he's gonna do it incredibly, and whatever I'm gonna do, he, nobody on the team has to worry about us. So it's just, it's a great, it's a great feeling just to know that I can count on him. So now that both have made their decision to come to Tempe, Harry and Lucas will look to leave one lasting impression at Chandler as they go through the playoffs in hopes of winning back-to-back -back state titles. In Chandler, for Cronkite Sports, I'm Chris Vosmer. Harry and Lucas are the latest great football players to come out of Chandler. Others include former UCLA quarterback Brett Hundley, who's now with the Green Bay Packers, and Saints defensive end Cameron Jordan, who was a pro bowler after the 2013 season. Coming up after the break, we'll hear about two brothers who went from wrestling in their living room to the mats at ASU. From the time they were freshmen, they always had it in their mind that they were not only going to be a state champion or a national champion, they were going to be Olympic champions and world champions. And we'll share the story of Arizona State's wheelchair basketball team and its impact on all involved. I was an athlete all my life, played football, baseball, basketball. And when I got hurt, you know, I figured there's nothing left. You know, I thought my life was over. Welcome back to Cronkite Sports on Fox Sports Arizona. Two brothers from Bellflower, California, were some of the best high school wrestlers the state had ever seen. And now both are at Arizona State, 
hoping to take Sun Devil Wrestling back to the pinnacle of the sport. Reporter Torrance Dunham has the story. Brothers Anthony and Zahid Valencia have been challenging each other for as long as they can remember. Uh, pretty much anything, you know, on the track, and you know, if we play video games or, you know, other sports that we play, it's just, we're just always competitive. Being so good at our sport, being so competitive, we get in a lot of arguments, but we've always worked it out, and we weren't the type of, you know, brothers that would always fight all the time and sick of each other. We, we, we're really cool with each other. The competitive spirit of the two brothers have led them to where they are today leading Arizona State's number one ranked recruiting class. They've been able to elevate each other, you know, get each other better, push each other, be in the fight together, sweat and bleed together, and I think that's been able to motivate them. But also because they're siblings, the love and the passion they share, you can see they can turn that into something special. That's one reason why we're so good. We practice with each other all the time and we always wanted to win, so we were very competitive. The brothers dominated the California competition while at St. John Bosco High School in Bellflower, California. They combined to win six state titles. This excellence resulted in Amateur Wrestling News ranking the brothers the number one recruit in the country at their respective weight classes. For me, they were the best high school wrestlers to ever come through the state of California. From the time they were freshmen, they always had it in their mind that they were not only going to be you know, a state champion or national champion, they were going to be Olympic champions and world champions. And so those goals are still uh, there for them. They want to be Olympic champions, they want to be world champions. and. And I definitely think that they're going to be able to do it because the, their work ethic is uh, unmatched by anybody that I've ever seen. And coaching for 20 years, their work ethic is um, incredible. A big reason why the Valencia brothers decided to wrestle here at Arizona State is because they believed in Coach Zeke Jones' vision to bring championships back to the program, a feat his team accomplished in 1988, the last time ASU had a number one rated recruiting class. I think Anthony and Sahid Valencia were the first believers. They were the first people to believe that Arizona State could be the best team in the country. We have the Olympic head coach here, and he's one of the best technicians in the world, uh, Zeke Jones. He's really good, and uh, that's, our, that's our main decision why we came here. We knew we wanted to go to a program that had a goal that we wanted to win NCAA championships, and I just feel that this is just the right place, we have the right coaches, the right training partners, and it's just a perfect fit for us to achieve our goals. Wrestling for the same school allows the brothers to help each other improve, something they have been doing for their entire lives. In Tempe, Torrance Dunham, Cronkite Sports. Coach Zeke Jones said the plan for 2015 is to redshirt Anthony as he prepares for the upcoming Olympic trials, while Zahid and the rest of the top drank recruiting class continues to build. Coach David Gonzalez has a national championship pedigree and is tasked with building up a program at ASU in a sport that helped change his life. Reporter Kevin Jimenez has more on how he's using that sport to help out others. ASU wheelchair basketball coach and player David Gonzalez was a two-sport star in high school until one day that all came to an end. So when I was 17 years old, uh, I fell victim to a gunshot wound uh, three times in my back. And I was an athlete all my life, played football, baseball, basketball. And when I got hurt, you know, I figured there's nothing left. You know, I thought my life was over. The shooting left Gonzalez completely paralyzed. Two years later, he started to regain the use of his upper body. His physical therapist tried to convince him to play wheelchair basketball, but he was reluctant. I just kind of looked at him with a crazy eye and I was just like, please, like no way, I don't want to play no wheelchair basketball. I mean, it just doesn't even sound athletic. Gonzalez finally tried the sport and was surprised by the talent it takes to compete. These people made me look silly. They embarrassed me, but they humbled me all at the same time. And the competitor inside me said, you know what? I can't let this happen anymore. Gonzalez went on to earn a scholarship to play wheelchair basketball at the University of Texas Arlington a powerhouse in the sport. He won a national championship there in 2006, the school's seventh title. Gonzalez moved to Phoenix last year to help start ASU's wheelchair basketball program. There I learned how to play ball at the highest level. I want to take those experiences and I want to, I want to bring them back to these guys so that they can have the same experiences. 
so that they can understand what it feels like to be a real athlete despite your disability. When you've grown up in sports your whole life and then it gets taken away from you and, and you're not able to do that anymore, it's really probably the hardest adjustment to make in life to kind of reestablish yourself and reinvent everything, I think. According to the International Wheelchair Basketball Federation, more than 100,000 people play wheelchair basketball. And to the players, it is often more than just a game. Passion, man. I love it. I have 10 years just doing it constantly every year. Um, off season, push on my own, uh, play summer league, um, and also coach. So we have like three members that barely played at all. Like last year was maybe their first year where they had like 10 practices under their belt and they're already this far. That to me, just seeing that happen and seeing them have the opportunity to play in college without having to leave their home state is, I mean, that definitely brings me joy. Gonzalez hopes to build awareness for the sport to get more exposure for wheelchair basketball. As I'm out in campus, as I'm around the Phoenix area, talking to community centers, going to hospitals, going to rehabs, really getting the word out to the population, letting them know not only is it for people with physical limitations, but it's for everybody. The team is co-ed right now, but hopes to split into women's and men's only teams by next year. In Phoenix, I'm Kevin Jimenez, Cronkite Sports. To find out more about the team and ways to get involved, you can check out their Facebook page, ASU Wheelchair Basketball. Coming up next on Cronkite Sports on Fox Sports Arizona, a former pro BMX rider is training the next generation at a local track. And find out how and why pickleball is exploding in popularity. I thought it was a dynamite game. You can hit that ball and, and you know, I have a bad knee, so uh, it's a game that I can play. All this and more following the break. Welcome back to Cronkite Sports on Fox Sports Arizona. I'm Mauricio Casillas. And I'm Rebecca Wynn. Kids who want to take their BMX careers to the next level are traveling to the West Valley to learn from a former pro. Reporter Chris Carveo talked to Marty Weishart and some of his riders and found out more. Riders ready, watch the gate. But something about being on a bike and just riding and uh, when your tires are on dirt, it just feels good, something about it. And uh, hitting jumps is freedom. You know, something about being in the air on a bike and the control you have and the individual sport, doing what I want, when I want, how I want to do it, it's just freedom. I really enjoyed that. Marty Weishart crossed the country for 19 years in the sport of bicycle motocross, BMX that is, turning pro in 2006 while also becoming a certified personal trainer. But after pedaling professionally for 10 years, the Kentucky native has finally hanged up his helmet. Now, living in the Phoenix area, can focus on raising the next generation of bikers at a local track in Goodyear. You gotta really focus on what their weaknesses are and how can we get their weaknesses to be even with their strengths or maybe be their strength. Uh, when I started out when I turned pro, my biggest weakness was starts. And over the last few years, my biggest strength, everybody knows me by my power and my starting ability. So I think it's being able to take your weakness and make it into your strength, as well as grow your strengths and be even better there. Some riders have trained with other instructors years before Weishart. But for them, Weishart's teaching style is on a whole different gear. I didn't used to get very good gates, but ever since I think the beginning of this year, I started training with him a lot more, and uh, he really helped me out a lot. He likes to focus on like statistics and like the basics to get you focused on you and not, not other riders. Phoenix is one of four BMX hotspots in the U.S., boasting three national caliber tracks, AZ Pro Track here in Goodyear, Black Mountain BMX up in North Phoenix, and Chandler BMX back east. And the competition here is just as great. The racing here in Phoenix is very competitive. Uh, top, top 10 is what to be asked for, kinda. And you just go out there and do your best. Here, I know one like major, or actually, I'm sorry, three like top nag guys, like fast kids that are at like the national level and they're really fast and it's a lot of fun. In 2014, Weishart and his wife bought a house in Goodyear, close to the track that drew him to the Phoenix area in the first place. Naturally, Weishart took the next step and became the operator of AZ Pro Track. This is my local track. Um, they needed more help. It's uh, pretty much a volunteer job and they're running short on help. So I just, as a local here and a professional rider, 
I've been around the track for many years. I know a lot of what it takes to run a facility, and I felt it was my time, it was my turn to step up. Weishardt's next turn at the track won't be for a spot on the podium. Rather, it will let Weishardt spread his professional experience and skills with the future of BMX. It's fundamentals. You know, a lot of kids want to learn a lot of fancy stuff or this or that, just like I did when I was a kid. Um, you want to jump or you want to do cool tricks or this and that. But you got to learn fundamentals. And I'm really, really big on pushing the fundamental things that I feel are the core to making you a better rider. Um, I'm big on quizzing them and questioning them and making them learn. So not only are they, are they riding, getting better at riding, but they're learning the fundamentals they need so they remember, like, this is what I need to work on um, so that they can really improve and get better. In Goodyear, Chris Cataveo, Cronkite Sports. All three BMX facilities in the Phoenix area host a practice or clinic at least five days a week. Races usually occur Friday through Sunday. After the break, find out what the sport of pickleball is and why it's growing here in the Valley. A lot of groups out here. It's just a great sport to meet new people and uh, to get involved with uh, you know, playing the game and, and meeting other new people. Welcome back to Cronkite Sports on Fox Sports Arizona. Pickleball, it's one of the fastest growing recreational sports not only here in America, but across the world. Reporter Brandon Johansson has more on a game that's fun for all ages. Pickleball, it's the fun game with a funny name and it's making waves in Arizona and all around the world. Uh, here at Pebble Creek, we've been playing it for since 2007. It's grown in popularity at least 20% every year. Invented in 1965, pickleball shares many qualities with other paddle sports, such as ping pong, badminton, and tennis. Since it was invented on a badminton court, pickleball adopted a court of similar size, a trait that is particularly appealing for members of the pickleball club at Pebble Creek in Goodyear as the sport is less physically demanding than others and allows for more socializing. You know, it's one of those sports that us uh, older generation can play. It keeps us people that uh, used to play a lot of sports uh, still active. It's a great sport for uh, exercise and uh, those of us that can't play softball or other things anymore, uh, we play pickleball and we just have a lot of fun out here. Again, it's just great, it's so social. You're close together, so you can rag the other team a little bit, unlike tennis where they're so far away you can't rag them. So you just have fun with everybody, and it's a great. It's easier on the knees, easier on the shoulders, and uh, you have fun. In a recent study from the Sports and Fitness Association, it was found that over 2 million people are playing pickleball, with courts in all 50 states and overseas in Europe and in Asia. According to the USA Pickleball Association, there were 523 new places to play in 2013, with an average of 44 new locations per month. 2014 was even better, with 754 new locations added at an average rate of 63 per month. 2015 has seen continued rise in participation. As of October 1st, there have been 719 locations added, good for an average of 72 per month. In 34 short months, the number of places to play pickleball has increased by 122% worldwide. Part of this increase can be traced to Arizona, where there are now 161 places to play. Pickleball is fun for first-timers, too. Oh, I thought it was a dynamite game. Ball and the paddle and the sound that it makes and, you know, the reaching for the shot and putting it over the net. Yeah, everything was great. It was fun. Randy Hagerman isn't the only out-of-towner who visits the Copper State and plays some pickleball. In fact, the largest pickleball event in the world came to Casa Grande this month in the form of the USAPA National Pickleball Championship. There is one common theme among those who are out on the courts. Everything was great. It was fun. Uh, we just have a lot of fun out here. And just have fun. It, it's just a, the ultimate social game. You, know, you can really laugh and enjoy the people you're with. In good year, I'm Brandon Johansson, Cronkite Sports. Now, Becca, there's a lot of differing stories and theories about how pickleball actually got its name, but the most widely accepted one was that one of the game's creators actually named it after Pickles, the dog. Pickles would actually take the ball that they were using to play the sport with and run away with it, and the rest was history. Well, that's it for now for all of us here at Cronkite Sports on Fox Sports Arizona. I'm Mauricio Casillas. And I'm Rebecca Wynn. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>